Hey everybody, welcome back to Overland Florida. I'm Kevin, Katie's behind the camera, and today's video has been long awaited. I figured it's about time that I go over my entire truck build, and I'm gonna tell you how much this thing cost for all the parts retail, and then I'm gonna tell you how much I paid for each part individually. So starting from the front of the truck, the biggest thing you're gonna notice is this gigantic ARB bumper. Um, I've owned a couple of these on my previous Jeeps, and I just absolutely love the ARB bumpers. They're just so sturdy, and they're just well built, and they're actually cheaper than some custom um, not so strong uh, bumpers themselves. So um, this bumper retails for about $1,500 and I bought this bumper actually used. I paid $1,000 for the bumper and there's also a hidden winch down here. There's a Smittybilt XC9. It's a 9,000 pound synthetic line winch. Even has a wireless remote. That retails for almost uh, $600. So I got the winch and the bumper for a thousand dollars. Ron and I actually drove to Georgia to go get it so the guy was really cool. He actually built a Tacoma and unfortunately rolled it over in an accident and a lot of the parts were still good untouched so he took the bumper off. I gave him a thousand dollars and we slapped it on the front of my truck so I looked out in that sense. Uh, these fog lights right here these are actually from Amazon. These are ARB nine inch fog light knockoffs. Um, through ARB if you bought ARB ones you're gonna spend like $400 for each light. Um, I bought both of these for like $98 on Amazon. They're actually really bright. Um, they're around 30,000 lumen. So they're basically as bright as, people have those light bars on top of their trucks. These are basically just as bright as light bars. They're just nine inch round lights. So um, $1,000 for this, about $100 for both of these. So um, like I said, retail would have been 1,500 for the bumper and then another 600 for uh, just the winch. Um, so we're gonna move around this side of the truck. I have a Dobinson's snorkel. Um, this is about $200. Um, other brands of snorkels are double that. But there is a gentleman, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, he actually works with Dobinson's. He actually owns like an off-road parts company and I can order all kinds of stuff through him. You guys can order stuff through him and you get really good discounts. So I bought this through him and I also bought some of my Dobbinson's suspension through him as well and got a really good deal. I think the suspension was like $300 off. Um, so that was really good for me as well. Um, I'll start with the wheels. These are uh, Forerunner TRD trail wheels. These aren't the ones that come on the Tacoma. So those are about $400 for all four. So $100 for a wheel is the going price on those. For my front suspension, I have um, Old Man Emu struts, and then I have the strongest springs. That's to carry the weight of the front bumper and the winch and all the weight of the truck with all the add-ons. Uh, that retails for, um, I wanna say just under, maybe just under like $800 for the springs and struts, and that comes already assembled. You can get it cheaper if you get it disassembled, but you're gonna have to put it together yourself or pay a shop to do it. So you're just gonna spend the money again. So might as well just get it sent to you, all put together, it's all good to go. I actually bought this suspension used. Um, I think I want. I think I paid like 250 bucks for the suspension. So that was a pretty good deal. It wasn't worn out. You, you could tell it had some miles on it, but you, then again, so you can either buy suspension used. It might be kind of worn out, or you know, break the bank and buy brand new suspension. So I went this route, saved a few bucks and uh, it probably needs to be uh, refreshed again. It's, it's been almost 100,000 miles that I've put on it myself, plus whatever the person had on it before that. So again, $400 for the TRD trail wheels. Um, I spent $250 on the suspension, $200 on the snorkel, and we're gonna get here to the Prinsu roof rack. This is probably one of the best things I bought. You are gonna lose one to two miles to the gallon with the Prinsu roof rack, and it is gonna add wind noise. But uh, this retails for about 600 bucks, and I emailed the company directly and asked them if they had any um, discount codes or anything. And I believe I bought it for $400, so I got like $200 off that. So that comes in pretty handy. You can put all kinds of stuff on there. It's strong, you can stand on it. You can put a rooftop tent, kayaks, um, you know, plano covers or plano boxes or whatever you want to put up there. It's, they got all kinds of systems to tie stuff down. It comes in really handy, I like it. Um, right here is the DFG Off-Road. This is actually a shower. DFG Off-Road is located in Florida, so if you want to buy any kind of overlanding gear, tents, refrigerators, refrigerator slides, anything, uh, if you want to support local, support them. They're located in Florida. They have a Facebook 
Instagram, uh, regular website, everything. So it's a, I'll, I'll show you guys another video, but it's just a collapsible shower. It comes out. Um, you go in there and shower. It's got lights and everything. It's a good changing room where you can use it for a restroom as well. Uh, moving back to the topper. So if you were to order a brand new topper, color match to your vehicle, you're going to spend almost $3,000. It is pretty expensive. Um, I bought this one as a factory reject. It was an ARE Overland series, so it had black bed liner already on it. Um, but there was a bubble in the bed liner, so the company didn't, did not want to sell it. So I got it direct from the company uh, as a factory defect. I think I paid like $800 for the topper. All I did was take a little razor blade, I peeled off all the rhino liner, or the bed liner, and then I took it to my friend, he painted it for like 50 bucks. So for just under $1,000, I got this color match to my truck, and it's brand new. It's the Overland series, so it has sliding windows with screens. Uh, inside has carpet so it's really comfortable inside. Um, other than that, there's really nothing special about it. Um, coming to the back here, I got, again, I got the uh, TRD trail wheels. I also have Dobinson's rear suspension. Um, I have their like 2.0 shocks. I have their greasable um, bolts that go through for the leaf springs. And on the leaf springs, I got the heavy duty 800 pound static load springs. And what that means is, since I have so much weight constantly in my truck, um, it's basically a static load. So these springs are rated for 800 pounds more than the stock springs to carry that extra weight. So uh, my truck does not sag at all. Um, it's actually really good. I prefer this. I would definitely buy this Dobinson suspension on my next vehicle over the Old Man Emu, which is on the front. Uh, when I hit like railroad tracks and stuff, it really feels really soft. It's like a trophy truck almost. Um, I just, I really enjoy it. It's a really good system and I don't think Dobinson's gets much credit. So that's retails for almost a thousand dollars, just the rear suspension what I have. Um, again, I think I paid like 700 or maybe a little bit less with my friend's discount through his uh, shop. And coming to the back, I have this huge gaudy rear bumper, which I absolutely love. Um, if you can't tell by the front bumper, I love huge bumpers. I've always had them on my Jeeps and when I got the Tacoma, um, the first thing I wanted was these huge ginormous bumpers. Um, this is the Brute Force Fabs. Um, with all the options and everything, you got the tire carrier, you got this uh, two gas can carrier right here. Uh, behind it you got Molly webbing. You have a fold down table right here. There's the molly webbing, which would be on the other side if you don't have this gas can rack on there. Um, you got two shackles right here. You got this thing right here, which is supposed to be where your trailer hitch plugs go. You got a hidden two inch receiver right there. And the best part of the bumper is it's high clearance. So it tucks up close under the truck. You actually have to cut the fenders, which right here, I had to cut the fenders of my truck off so the bumper's tucked up more underneath the truck, which gives you a lot more ground clearance, like the parting angles if you're going up or down, um, embankments or whatnot. So this whole bumper right here, shipping, powder coating, and all the accessories is gonna run you like $3,000. So lucky for me, my friend Travis owned this bumper uh, previously, and I always asked him about the bumper and you know where he got it from and stuff, and he was actually getting ready to sell it. Uh, he wanted a different bumper that didn't have a swingway tire carrier on it so I actually bought it from him for a thousand dollars so it was a steal and I mounted on my truck it's been great ever since I highly recommend brute force fabs they make other things um, before I had this topper on the truck I actually had a, a bed rack it was made by brute force fabs and it was awesome it had all kinds of different mounts you could put anything you wanted on there um, but again just this bumper setup right here as you see it was about three thousand dollars if I was to order it from brute force fabs so continuing on the driver's side of the vehicle, right here you're gonna notice there is a solar panel. We'll get to that here in a second. This side of the truck, there's really nothing special, nothing really done to it. I do have an awning made by Tough Stuff. I have owned this for almost five years and it is absolute quality. I've used it in all kinds of rainstorms, windstorms. It's been flipped over the vehicle a few times, never been ripped or torn. I've had it over fires, so there's been all kinds of heat and smoke and it's not worn out at all. I would definitely buy Tough Stuff brand awnings again and again. Um, this one is six and a half feet long. It actually comes out eight feet, so it gives you a pretty good area of shade and um, shelter from the rain. And 
uh, actually have a room. If you watch my videos, I have a room that snaps into it. So you have a room that's roughly six feet tall. It's eight feet long and six and a half feet wide. So you can put a full size mattress in there. You can put backpacks, gear, all sort of stuff in there. So it really does come in handy. Um, like I said, I would put this on any vehicle I own in the future. So that's it for the outside of the vehicle. Now let's go into the back. All right, right here, this is normally on top of the truck on the roof rack. And I just happened to put it at the back because it wasn't on there. Um, I will be mounting it back on there because this is where I keep all my recovery gear. Um, this box right here came from Harbor Freight. They have them for roughly $99 if you can get them on sale or whatnot. Otherwise, I think there might be 150 bucks. But uh, these things are heavy duty. They're strong. They're waterproof. I really like them. And if you are taking things in and out of your vehicle a lot, they do have wheels in the back. Comes in handy if you got something in there that's really heavy. Um, let's go ahead and open it up. We'll just see what we got in here. It's been a while since I've opened this up. And we have a recovery strap right here. We got two vehicle hooks right here. Um, this is if you're trying to recover a vehicle or tow a vehicle that does not have um, factory tow hooks. Um, you can use any of these hooks right here, hook it in the frame um, on the front, the back, the side or whatever, and you can drag the vehicle um, using these hooks. Um, comes in really handy. Ron actually got me these because we were in a situation we had to move a van on the beach and we had nowhere to put the clasp for the uh, winch line and then uh, we had to move a uh, Lincoln town car same situation no tow hooks on that so uh, we didn't have any way to move it so Ron bought these and we each have one comes in really handy got WD-40 got some gloves and right here I have an air pump which came from the Dollar General I think uh the only reason I bought this, it was on sale or clearance, and it was like $3. And this fills up my tires. It takes a little bit longer because it's small, but for a few dollars, a few air pump, you know, a little air pump, um, it saved me more times than, uh, it's definitely paid for itself. So, definitely plan on upgrading the air compressor just so it doesn't take so long and doesn't overheat, but for a few bucks, it'll get you out of a pinch. Um, right here, I have the wireless winch remote for the uh, winch and it is wireless right here there's batteries inside so you can use it like this or if your batteries are dead you can plug the cable in got a clevis right here you can never have enough of those i recommend probably two or three um, that way in case you have a really heavy vehicle or a situation you need to um, go around a snatch block you have another clevis here to hook up the winch block these come in handy as well if you need to double your uh, your uh, winch line or whatever, your pulling power, I mean, you can definitely use a snatch block. Um, I got a recovery um, shackle right here for the hitch for a two-inch receiver, and I got another strap right here. I also have a tire patch repair kit or a tire plug repair kit right there. So. There's a lot of stuff that could be added to this, but this is just what I keep in my truck every day for just generic recovery stuff in case I come across a stuck vehicle or if I become the uh, stuck vehicle. So go ahead and just put that down like that for now. And these are my boxes. These are actually given to me by Jack. He had them in his Tacoma, didn't want them anymore, asked me if I wanted them and I was like, absolutely. So. Ron went and picked them up for me, and now I have drawers. These are five and a half feet long, so fit all kinds of stuff in here. Just everything you can imagine. So one day I'll go over exactly what's in here, but I have some cooking stuff, fire starter, bug spray, soap, a shower, hammock, an extra starter for the truck, paper towels, paracord, you know, just all kinds of just random stuff. Same with this side, this is more of the cooking stuff I have cans right there to make all of our um, all of our uh, desserts that we cook in our Dutch ovens I got pots pans cups forks knives spices I have a complete stove right back there with chopping blocks and tin foil and just all kinds of generic cooking stuff so that's special other than that if you want to see right here like I said I got screen on the inside for the topper I also have carpeted inside, makes it really nice. And you can lay a sleeping bag down in here, a sleeping pad, and actually sleep in the back. So um, that makes it really nice. 
other than that, I have um, six USB ports right here. I'm sorry, I got five. I got four right here and then one on the top. They're fast charging, so I can plug all the cameras and cell phones and support everyone's uh, support everyone's need to repower things right there. So, so right here I have a really simple solar setup. This is a 170 watt solar panel. I don't have all these extra batteries and all these extra wires and stuff running everywhere. This is really simple. So the two wires that come from the solar panel, they go down between the cab and the bed. They go underneath the truck and they come up in the engine bay. I only have one battery. It's 80 amp hours. It came from AutoZone. It was about $200, but it's an AMG battery and it lasts uh, you know, five or more years. So it's a really good battery. It runs my refrigerator and everything full time. Uh, refrigerator never shuts off or anything. So I have an MPPT charger underneath the hood of the truck. It's right next to the battery. So all you really need is this solar panel, a charge controller, and a good deep cycle battery. So I went with the AMG. So you're looking all together, um, probably 150 for the solar panel. If you get a really nice MPP, MPPT charger like I have, you're gonna spend a little over $100. So 150, 100, and then 200 for the battery. You can get away with using your stock battery that's in your truck or vehicle for a little while, but eventually you're gonna to wanna to upgrade that. So, um, you know, you're gonna spend probably five or six hundred dollars for a nice just under 200 watt solar setup so there's that now we got one last thing to do and that's to look on the interior of the truck and I'll show you guys everything I've done inside so starting with the back seat of the truck right here on the passenger side I have actually removed the bottom portion of the seat which gave me a nice little metal um, shelf right here and I have mounted an Iceco 65 quart refrigerator I love this refrigerator this is their pro model so you can open the lid this way you can open it this way or you can just remove it all together so um, i do have discount code for all ice co refrigerators and everything it's overland florida it's one word put it in there you get like 15 percent off it's actually a really good code um, i don't make any money off of it but it'll help you guys out as well um, this refrigerator right here retails for just under a thousand bucks i believe um, of course this was given to me for free so um, i mounted it in my truck with these right here one on each side and this thing is not going anywhere it's not going to rip out i also removed all the carpet inside the truck my truck got really wet at one point and i just ended up removing all the carpet and um this is pretty much what it's going to look like if you uh, don't have carpet in your truck other than that one thing you're going to notice if you want to put the camera in here is i have a whole molly setting uh set up right here going all the way across from one grab handle to the other grab handle and you can mount all kinds of things in there so and I also have a piece right here that goes underneath the headrest. You can mount all kinds of stuff. You can hang carabiners and backpacks and water bottles or pocket knives or whatever you want to put on there. Other than that, that's pretty much all that's going on right there in the back seat. Go to the front right here. Again, I have no carpet in the front of the truck, so this is what it's going to look like if you take your carpet out. Probably be nice to just right align it, but other than that, going on up front, I have two... These are called Hondo garage mounts. These are actually just little Ram balls, Ram mounts that uh, mount to my uh, air conditioner vents. I have one right here, one over there. That one's for like my phone. This one over here is for uh, like a, I put my tablet right here. So when we're going on long trips or whatnot, um, there's really not much. I'm not really much of an interior person to be honest with you. Over here on each door panel, I have more Molly right here. I did not buy this stuff. This was given to me um, by William. Um, if you were to buy both door panels, the thing above the uh, rear seat and the headrest molly panels, you're looking at like 250 bucks um, if you order those. So um, I don't have anything on them. I don't really have anything to put on them, to be honest with you. Um, they are pretty strong. You do have to drill four holes into your door panels, but they're really strong. They're not going to go anywhere. And um, it's a really good product. It's, you know, thin them. Thin metal, it's, it's not really heavy, it's not super strong, I mean, but it's not going to get ripped off, but other than that, that's pretty much it for the interior of the truck. Um, do you need all this stuff for overlanding? Of course not. The only thing I probably would recommend is um, just a front bumper and a winch to get yourself out of any situation you get yourself into. Other than that, I mean, you don't really need all this other crazy stuff. 
so save your money. I just happen to be on Facebook Marketplace a lot and I find a lot of good deals on used things, so I save a lot of money that way. Other than that, if you guys have any questions about anything that's done to my truck or where to get parts or who to contact to get discounts on things, go ahead, leave me a comment and I'll be more than happy to leave you guys all the information. Thanks for watching.